Hello everybody, welcome back at Beyond the Planet! Today's episode 14, we took a little break. Uh, it was uh, very busy here at Albert's. We had a lot of missions coming together. Uh, it was uh, getting a new production finally done and finally out. First machines came out of the factory. A massive milestone! Work. <laughs> We are now testing these machines here and then we can bring them to the first clients. Uh, here means in our HQ in Antwerp. As you all know, Beyond the Blend is a podcast of Alberts. At Alberts, we try to make a healthy life the easiest option. And with Beyond the Blend, we try to open our doors, bring you into our startup, and try to have inspiring conversations with people that can really get you to know how it is to get something started and get something growing. It would massively help us if you could hit that like button here underneath and mainly the subscribe button doesn't cost you anything and you can cancel it anytime. So today a conversation with Carol Jacobs. Who is Carol? Carol is the founder or co-founder and CEO of EpicBase. EpicBase is a software platform that we use ourselves as well. We use it for manage, man, menu management. Um, so Carol will explain everything later. I just finished recording with him. Um, it was a extremely busy time, like I just said. We missed some weeks, but we have a, a new pipeline of super nice guests. There is a new concept coming up very soon as well. Can't say anything about it yet, um, but next week I will. Uh, so I would say for now, enjoy the episode with Carol. We're back online, we're back in the game, and see you next week. Welcome everybody back at Beyond the Blend. It's episode, I think, 14, but it's been a while. So here we are today with Carol. Uh, Carol is co-founder and CEO of Epic Base. Welcome, Carol. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. It's really, it, it has been quite a journey to try to get together. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I think we had to postpone four times and then today my computer is gone. So I have another computer. It's a, a, a little bit messy, but we're here. So we're happy. Four times is a charm, man. Eh? <laughs> yes, that's what they say. Um, Carol, uh, welcome. You are, uh, as I said in the intro, the co-founder and the CEO of Epic Base. Um, it would be wonderful if you could take us a little bit through the journey of your professional life and maybe explain us what Epic Base is, just for everybody to get to know you uh, from the start. All right. Thank you very much, Glenn. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Carl, and as uh, Glenn said, I'm currently the co-founder and CEO of Epic Base, and uh, that is actually something that I've been doing since uh, 2014, I believe. Um, uh, well, Epic Base, and what we do today is actually we we build a food and beverage management software, uh, which typically, if you if you want to know what that means, it's a software that we build to manage the back of house of restaurants and restaurant chains. Mm -hmm. um, so typically, uh, businesses use our software to, uh, um, let's say, centralize and uh, standardize their processes in their kitchens, uh, going from recipe management, food cost calculation, allergens, etc., uh, all the way to inventory management, procurement, uh, production planning, and all of that. And I can uh, say we, we use Epic Base, so I can say it's good. <laughs> that's correct. Uh, I'm happy that you are a, a happy customer uh, and, and we do everything in our power to, to keep you happy. Uh, yes. So, so that, that is what we do uh, or what, what Epic Base is today. And actually, that is something that we started building in 2017, so five years ago. And that is also um, so so. Actually, as I said, working started working on Epic Base in 2014. But uh, you are not a startup if you do not do a, a serious pivot in your career. So <laughs> yes. we, we did a pivot around 2017, where we actually moved from uh, hardware, building a, a photo studio for the professional kitchen. So literally a studio with camera, lights. It was a very small studio, 60 by 60 by 60, you could say. And you can you could, you could take a very simple uh, top shot picture with that. And that, that was the original idea. And then gradually, we started building more and more software around that hardware. And in 2017, we took the decision um, to uh, um, stop building the hardware, or at least, you know, uh, in, in the future, stop building the hardware and focus entirely on the software. And today, we are a 100% software company without nice. any uh, hardware anymore. Nice. And 
so yeah, that's that's the that's the epic base story. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, most people ask me then, you know, how did you yeah. ever get to the idea of of going to into epic base? And honestly, um, that is because. Um, a few of my friends, two of my friends were in the in the restaurant business. I was not in the restaurant business. And they had this issue of taking pictures of everything they did in the kitchen. And that's uh, actually how they asked me, you know, can you join Epic Base uh, on a, on a uh, or almost, let's say, a friendly basis? Like we need somebody to do the project. And uh, the reason why they asked me is because uh, one of those friends I studied with and I actually, I'm an artist historian uh oh, really that's yeah. your education oh, crazy <laughs> so um and uh, i i actually met one of those guys in, in in art history class um at the university of brussels back then you know um i i met him because uh, there was no uh, student club uh, for art historians so mm -hmm. i decided to take that upon me uh, and i said i i founded the student club of of the art history uh, faculty in in, in at the University of Brussels, and uh, and then you know we became very good friends, and we did a, a few uh, let's say projects together. Um, but they were like limited in time. Uh, but of course, he knew uh, you know my 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 capacity and my capability of of setting up stuff and 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 you know pushing stuff forward. So when he had the idea of the photo studio, he asked me to join just you know because he made he, he knew that you know when when I job I would join that it, it would be become a real project uh, and that's actually uh, how I how I joined or how I became part of epic base um, but the original idea was from from uh, from the friends and then nice. over the time uh, in, in between 2014 2017 we had a lot of uh, you know questions from customers and then you know you start working on that project and 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 it becomes your own project almost <laughs> uh, yeah you 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 pivot uh, and you go for 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 another story or at least uh, let's say the second chapter of the story Yes, yes, yes. There are so many similarities because um, it's fair to say that on a personal level, we don't know each other uh, really well. Uh, let's say we never drank a beer together. But so, it's, so, it's always so weird to see similarities because I also studied at the VUB. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my side, I started uh, or restarted there together with another friend, an international, so a, a union, the EIA state was called. It's a bit like ISEC, but then more for engineering profiles. Mm -hmm. So we, we restarted the Brussels chapter. And then in the beginning, I uh, the first startup I had was with Hans. He's also uh, at Albers today as CTO. Yeah. And that was in photo booths. So not to take pictures for meals, but to take pictures for events and connected to the cloud. Oh, it was, yeah. new, was new back then. But the only difference is that we stayed in hardware. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, did, we did not pivot all the way to software, although Albers has a lot of software as well. Of course, to run the robots, to run the cloud, to run menus, to run systems. But still, I mean, the core of the product cannot survive without the, the hardware. Uh, no, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, that's uh, you are an engineer, so I guess you have a lot of affinity with hardware. We, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I am not an engineer. Eh? I'm far from. I'm nothing actually. I'm an art historian, um, but uh, <laughs> not, nothing useful for 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 a startup. You could say, um, but my co-founder Peter, uh, he, he's a he's a, a, a computer scientist. So our affinity was much more in the software. So hardware was much more difficult for us than software. So yeah. it, it it made a lot of sense for us to really pivot into that software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think you did that very well. I really see in the food tech space that Epic Base is becoming like a, a name uh, that people know, that many startups know. So I think you're. Yeah, you're really uh, pushing through there. So that's uh, very nice. So it's lovely to see that an art historian can end up CEO of software company. That's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Um, if you can, Carol, would you be open uh, to somehow match or, or so similarities or differences with your personal life? How that, let's say, evolved? Because, of course, now you're leading a team of how many people at Epic Base? 65. Um, 65. 
65 people. Uh, that's a bunch of people, right? It will probably be even hard to remember all the names. Uh, but, <laughs> so well, I still do. <laughs> okay, 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 good. Um, so the question that, of course, art historian, good memory, right? Uh, so uh, the question that pops up in the mind is, okay, um, how do you match your personal life and how do you find a balance uh, with leading this whole bunch um, of people into an adventure, which is epic base, and at the same time trying to build out a personal life that is sustainable? <laughs> yeah, well, I I, I, I might not be the best example in this case because um, I am I am the typical workaholic entrepreneur. Um, I uh, I actually when I when before before I, I joined Epic Base or before I, I founded Epic Base, you could say um, I was working in the uh, in the art world uh, and I did a lot of projects there as well, and uh, and and I get a lot of joy out of all out of the projects that I did or do. Um, and and they are actually also a lot of my personal life in the sense that I love what I do. And I've always loved what I, I did. I mean, when I was in the art world, uh, I did uh, exhibitions, I wrote books, I, I design books i i talk to uh, to um to artists uh, all of that and 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 today in 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 epic base you know being the ceo of a, of a, a fairly successful startup you could say is is something that really drives me and 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 i i really really enjoy talking and 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 speaking to people um so so it's never felt actually as work and and actually i can tell you a little anecdote on that because especially in the beginning now it's less but when between 2014 and 2018 i think um i felt quite guilty uh really? quite, because i i i thought of all the people that had to work and i never yeah, felt yeah, yeah. Work. So, so I was, you know, I was just doing my hobby almost, and and I was getting paid for it. So I had this idea, like how 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 horrible must it be to go to work and and not love what you're doing? And that's also what I try to say to the people that join Epic Base. Um, you know, when you do the introduction for new team members and you you explain how we work and company culture, you know, the value number one or the, the rule number one really is you know you need to enjoy your time at epic base and mm -hmm. if you don't enjoy your time please tell us and 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 maybe we have to fire you or you have to quit or we have to find another job for you or mm -hmm. or another role in the company but please do not come to epic base if you do not like what you're doing because everything else that we ask you to do every result every kpi every whatever that is asked from you comes from the joy that you have when you are actually coming to Epic Base. 100%. 100%. And that's actually why I say, yeah, I'm, 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 well, from the outside, you could say I'm the typical workaholic. So not much of a, a private life or a personal life, but that is because my, my professional life is very much what I love and what I, what I love to do every day. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, um, I think there are many similarities with me as well. I, yeah, many friends always tell me like you're always working, but then I think yeah, but at the same time never like it's okay. it's it feels like the same now. Yeah, when it, when I did start to feel it is when when so now I have uh, two kids and you told me as well you have two kids and then you start feeling like ah shit okay yeah um, if I don't organize myself now, I cannot bring them to crash or I cannot pick them up and I cannot be there before they sleep. And then you feel like, okay, wait, like there, there are still the same amount of hours in a day, <laughs> but there needs to be shifting an organization to at least uh, get the gaps when they are there to get, at least try to get that together. Yeah. yeah. The, the you're, you're I struggle right. with that also, first yeah, yeah, I think I think you're you're completely right. I think, uh, of course, I do spend uh, time at, with my kids. Um, I, I probably I'm not the most exemplary father in that sense, like that I'm not there every day and every every hour of the day. Uh, but when I am with my kids, I try to spend the time with my kids. That's also a promise I made myself, um, and I made to them. Um, but, but yeah, uh, in, in general, if you look at, you know, the majority of my time, uh, I'm spending it on, on, on projects and doing, yeah. and especially yeah. spending a lot of time on Epic Days. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, same here. I think um, it's a cheesy question, but I always like to touch together upon like, what was your highest high and your lowest low? Like, uh, <laughs> what do you want to share, of course? But can you share with people? Because often it's very hard to get something started or it feels like crazy. And on LinkedIn, it feels like everything is always fine. So that's a bit our reason why we wanted Beyond the Blend, you know, to just get a little bit of insights. So could you share something where you say, you know, that was like low, low, and that was like high, high, in the journey so far well for me it's uh it's i i i'm i don't want to sound obnoxious in this in any way but for me finding a lowest low is very difficult because i am very positive in life and even when something goes wrong i don't really necessarily experience that as a very low low i mean there is nothing where i kind of say who am i this was really uh, uh crazy or i never want to experience this again or something like that um so so for me of course you have daily struggles of course you know you you you, you sometimes have to uh you know do things you don't like like firing people or people or people that come to say to you and say you know i i don't want to work with you anymore which yeah. is fine and, and these are things that happen but i don't really have like really low lows i do have stressful situations which i do not wish anybody for and then one of those <laughs> is, is the 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 the, let's say the the few weeks before uh, having an investing uh, investment round, yeah. <laughs> which are you know the, the let's say the least pleasant moments uh, in, in in one's life. I would say I, I can say that, but they, of course they build up to one of the most high things eh? because once this investment is going through, you can you know you can start grow. growing and and go for the for the moon, shoot for the moon. But okay, those five six weeks before the closing period are very stressful. Here, yes, uh, definitely. They, they always remind me of two movie titles, like uh, it's the perfect time to be alive, but at the same time, it's the perfect time to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very stressful period, but but again, it's not a low in the sense that it, it is yeah. not something you never want to experience again. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's difficult to say uh, the lowest low. Yeah, a little bit like positivity and luck is partly also an attitude of course uh, we of course being born in the western world is the, the biggest luck you uh, like we both enjoyed and then of course having the luck to be grown up in a family that somehow brought you certain values and a financial situation that gives a good head start is like Thanks. the biggest luck so then you are already in the top one percent of luck of the world but then zooming in in that aspect <laughs> i i think so once you're then there i think from there on luck is for a big part an attitude like and absolutely and 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 in in that sense i mean what you just mentioned I, I, my co-founder and i we also talk about that it's actually the philosophy of of the dice eh? it's throwing the dice and every time you throw the dice especially you know you and me eh, we we throw a six eh? only maybe if you start comparing us to 100 million billion people um, people that have billions then you could say oh yeah we have a five instead of a six I but even I, in all the senses we are we are we are sixes and and, exactly. and we, we need to we need to remember that i think it's really important yeah. because it's really easy to get lost in in small details or in, in things that you don't like or, or or start nagging about stuff but in the big picture of things you know we we both do what we like we we both have a successful business or building a successful business uh, we we both have nice teams where we can work with we have beautiful children we are happy i mean there is no there is there is relatively spoken of course there are you know moments that you feel better than others but in general if you look in the big picture of things we i don't think there is much we can do. Um. Definitely. And when it really hits me, when something feels very negative, then I always just, for me, or <laughs> I try to imagine, which is impossible, but I try to imagine the size of the universe. Absolutely. And so it's wow. billion, it's billion of light years. And a light year is the time that you sit on a light beam, traveling on that light beam for one year. And that you have to do billions of times. And yeah. then I always think, okay, maybe our problems are limited. 
<laughs> and, and it is, it is a, it's, a, it's a matter of really uh, also understanding that, uh, you know, even if you have bad luck, then you still need to pers- put it in perspective because, you know, also in terms of, of, of uh, let's say, being wealthy and all of these things. I mean, of course, everybody, more is better, you could say, but, but it, it is actually a very important lesson that you also understand, you know, just, you know, living, you, you need to live and not, not necessarily for, for the most. And you have to really feel and understand that, that what you have is so valuable already. Yeah, exactly. I totally underline that. So on the positive side, then are there moments where you think like, oh yeah, that, that moment I felt like king of the hill. <laughs> well, well, there, there's quite a few, eh? of course, the, the, the births of my children are highs in my life. Um, also, uh, you know, signing up your first customer is something you never forget. And making money, signing up your biggest deal ever, and in the sense like you know, you you've worked so hard to get it to the next level, and then it finally drops. Um, what I really enjoy is you know talking to to the team in the quarterly updates and seeing you know all happy faces, people that you know buy into your story. These are are things that really give me a thrill and and really are the the, the moments that you cherish. Uh, so, so yeah, highs, there's, there's plenty of them and you live from high to high almost. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's clear. So, I mean, I think you already gave a lot of, of insights in how you try to reason and how that helps towards the success you're at now, but is there maybe mm-hmm. something specifically for people that get started or are planning to get started or even don't dare to get started where you think, okay, that's maybe an insight or a perspective that's important to underline or to stress or to re-underline. Yes, for people that don't uh, don't dare to start, um, is of course yeah. It sounds weird, but if you if you know the the reason I really got into uh, entrepreneurship is is by being fired. Eh? At that moment, uh, mm-hmm. I was not in a good relation with with my boss, so it was uh, either uh, it was a bit sounds a bit funny, but it was him or me. Uh, so okay. that had to leave. Um, 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 so so that was the moment that I said, okay, so now I have ten or twelve months. I don't know how long it was. A little bit of support from the state. This is the moment that I can focus one hundred percent on on doing my own thing, and uh, and that coincided with Epic Base. So that was the perfect moment. So so having this this little financial backup because it was not a lot, huh? but it was just enough. Pay the rent and, and pay the pay the bills. Um, that gave me the power to to really get going. Uh, so so if you if you don't dare to go, look into your reserves. See, do you do I have enough money to to survive twelve months? And then I would really say yes, go for it. Um, but then and 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 once you you you're going, I mean, get a lot of advice from people. But in the end, the best advice I ever got. I, I actually got two two advices which I I really uh, I remember and and I think I cherish. The first one is um, throughout all the advice you get, as the entrepreneur, you're the one that needs to take the decision because nobody else knows your business better than you do. So it's your your responsibility to to listen, but also to decide what you want to follow, the path you want to follow. Uh, and the second uh, advice I got, and that's, that sounds very lightweight, but it's very heavy actually, is as a CEO or as a co-founder, once your team becomes growing, uh, starts growing and becomes a bit bigger, you, you don't need to know anything. You just need to know who knows it within your business. And that's really, that's really something that's really important because it gives you the freedom as a, as a CEO um, to, to work on strategy, uh, to, you know, to trust people. You need to trust people in order to, to be able to do this. Uh, 
and 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 it gives you also the insight that you need to hire people that are better at the job than you are and as an entrepreneur and as a as a starting founder i mean in the beginning you do everything and everything best but in the along the way you need to understand that you know you have to give responsibilities to other people you have to trust those and your job is to know who knows what within your company yeah yeah these are very very important things i think in alberts now today we are uh, around about 15 people um i think 16 now um and yeah we really decided uh so after the last investment round, when we started hiring, we also really decided explicitly to hire uh, people who are experienced, who have 15 plus years of experience, 20 yeah. plus years of experience. And I'm very happy that they are there because, yeah, you can really start um, in the beginning, start leaning uh, on them because, of course, they need the intro period to really uh, get started with everything we do. And then uh, the leaning becomes really like resting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, but then, of course, all the other challenges arrive, so it, it's never ending. Uh, but now it feels fantastic to, yeah. Yeah, to have that. Yeah, support. and actually, talking about that, uh, that's maybe an advice also that that is really valuable. Um, and and if I would ever do it again, um, I would definitely do this. Um, in the beginning, you get a little bit of money. Eh? You get half a million investment. And what you do with that money is you hire juniors because they're cheap. Actually, you should, you shouldn't do that. You should do mediors or seniors. Of course, not the top level seniors because they don't execute anymore. But the ones that still execute uh, and have somebody who has done it already somewhere else. This is so important and buys you so much time and time equals money. So if you can execute faster, that money is much more worth than, than the money you put into juniors. So I would definitely go for mediors or seniors rather than, uh, again, go for a, a bunch of, of juniors because they're cheaper. Yeah, definitely. And maybe something I can throw in as well. Uh, in the beginning, when so the first startup we did was the photo booth thing, it was bootstrap. So we did everything ourselves, uh, which was good to know that we never wanted to do that again. <laughs> um, and then so the second time we started, um, we decided to come, actually the building I'm still at now, or building next to it because they expanded, but it's Foxdale, it's an engineering company. My philosophy from day one, I thought like, okay, we cannot pay seniors on the payroll because uh, we don't have money, uh, but I can pay two juniors. So let's take two juniors, but let's hire by the hour some experts here, but here in the building so that we can really close very work, very close interaction, like yeah. literally that they literally time the minute. And then we could buffer that expertise level with that full blown power junior level where you say, okay, fuck it, we go all night. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, that helped us a lot to, to get started. Um, but indeed, exactly what you say, uh, only starting with juniors is almost creating a, creating an unfair disadvantage for yourself. Like, exactly. Like, I mean, it, it, it brings a lot of uh, stress to you. Uh, you still have to decide everything yourself. And I think, and they need to learn it on, on your payroll. And uh, you'd rather have somebody who learned it. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now you're growing so big that now that might be Epic Base. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, of course, in, 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 in a situation where you have 65 people, there's definitely room for, for juniors <laughs> who, who need to, you know, do some routine tasks and, and get to know the business and get to know the job. But when you're 10 to 15 people, you'd rather have people that are really, um, you know, that, that can bring value to the table from day one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Carol, I think this was a very insightful conversation, <laughs> or at least I found it. Um, so thank you all very right. much for jumping on. Um, all the best of luck with Epic Base. Um, thank you very I, much. I propose the next time we talk, uh, you hit uh, triple digits in the, the people, because that should normally mean that your business is thriving even further, <laughs> or I hope at least. Uh, so thank all you right. very much. Have a blast of a day and uh, yeah, we catch you to next time, right? Fantastic. Thank you very Great. much, Ken. Thanks Bye. for Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.